it was the first time I'd felt hope in a long time. And I'd really missed that. Um, and so it was, it was that sort of just playing with feeling, right? Uh, the, the, the manifestation of what it would feel like to be on the other side is then what made it possible for me to, it took a long time, right? Orchestrating financially, job-wise, everything. That was the moment where I thought, okay, this, I think this is the direction I want to move in. Hey, midlifers, welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostess. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. Are you ready to transform your emotional world and embrace a life filled with joy, peace, and authenticity? Then you'll love our free resource, the Emotional Mastery Manual. This manual isn't just a guide. It's your companion through the fascinating journey of emotions. Discover how to shift from feelings of shame and fear to love and enlightenment with our easy-to-follow tools like the scale of emotions and the wheel of emotions. Whether you're dealing with midlife changes, past regrets, or just aiming to add more positivity to your daily routine, the Emotional Mastery Manual is here to support you. Download your free copy today at emotion.wendyvalentine.com and start elevating your emotional energy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, we have an incredible guest who brings a fresh perspective on embracing change and finding new beginnings. Meet Kelly McMasters, a best-selling author, professor, and former bookshop owner in New York. Kelly's impressive works include The Leaving Season, Welcome to Shirley, a memoir of an atomic town, which, by the way, was one of Oprah's top five summer memoirs. Thank you very much. And wanting women writing about desire. That's got to be so good. Today, Kelly will share her insights on the power of looking at leaving as a new beginning. I totally agree. Whether it's leaving a job, a relationship, or even a town, she believes that every ending can be the start of something beautiful. Get ready for a thoughtful and inspiring conversation that will encourage you to see new opportunities where you might have only seen loss. Let's give a warm welcome to Kelly McMasters. Thank you so much, Wendy. That's so nice. I always imagine like if someone's watching the video on YouTube, (laughs) I'm just sitting here like, (laughs) we'll just dance around. Well, welcome. It's so nice to have you here. Oh, thank you, Wendy. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. And I'm excited about, well, both of those books, um, The Leaving Season. And then what was the other one? The Women, the Women, uh, whoa, 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 what's it called? Yeah, there it is. Women yeah. Writing About Desire. Which one do you want to talk about first? I'm up for either. I think they're so intermingled. Uh, we can really do either. Yeah, I was gonna say they they really are because um with desire sometimes becomes uh it turns into leaving. <laughs> I think sometimes that is what re- what is required. You have to yeah. understand that there is something you want, and yeah, oftentimes you need to leave to get it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your story of leaving. Yes, sure. So this book traces, um, like you said, multiple different types of leaving. So um, the main spine of the book is leaving a marriage. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is, so we go through sort of the, you know, every divorce story starts as a love story and there was plenty of love there. Uh, And then together we wind up leaving the city, uh, moving to the country. And essentially it, it started with this idea of, 
living what I thought was my perfect life. Mm. So I was and I had left Manhattan, living in rural Pennsylvania on 10 acres, had two little kids and you know, running around in diapers in the in the field. I owned a bookshop, a small independent bookshop, and everything seemed perfect. And yet um, I was uh, just this incredible sadness that um, mm. could not be resolved with no matter how much work or exterior things yeah. I tried to fill it with um, because my marriage was falling apart. Mm. And so the heartbreak of the book, the reason that um, that I sort of wanted to explore it in the written form mm. is in order to fix that, in order, once I saw that and I couldn't unsee it, I needed to dismantle and leave all of these other things that I loved so much. Yeah. I loved my house. I loved my bookshop. I loved the idea of children running in the wild, you know, in the in the woods. Um, and I needed to leave all of that in order to, in the hopes of a better new beginning. Yes. And there's no guarantee. It's very scary. But that is the heart of the book. There's this quote, um, which kind of helped me during my time of like, you know, midlife meltdown, if you will. Um, and I don't know who said this quote. Maybe it was me. Maybe I made it up. Um, but a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. And it's so funny because I, I sat when I was in my sunroom in Virginia, in Williamsburg, Virginia, and I was sitting there and I was looking out the lake and it's so silly, but sometimes, you know, simplest metaphors or simplest teachings can be the most profound, like can literally like make you move. Right. And I was sitting there and on the corner of my desk was this little potted plant and it, I'd had it for a couple of years. Right. And in the corner was the same type of plant in a larger pot that also I had had for a few years, but it was much larger, obviously. And it made me think like, wait a second, I need to repot myself, if you will. I need to get into a larger pot in order for me to grow because I was keeping myself small inside this little bitty pot, if that makes sense. And so you almost as comfortable, as amazing as, as my surroundings were and my life in a lot of ways, it was like, I had to force myself to go into a larger pot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a difference between surviving. Yes. Right. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we could always, I, I think, I don't know about you, but like, even if things are okay in the relationship, at home, career, where you live, everything, you could rationalize it and be like, this isn't that bad. Like, I shouldn't be such a brat. <laughs> I should just be, you know, content with that. But you, but no, you have to be like, am I truly, truly happy? Like, if you, I always feel like if you're thinking to yourself, is there more, then there's more. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all of those different pockets, right? You've got your love relationship, you've got your relationship with yourself, you're feeding your creativity, you've got your family, right? All of those things, career, all of them can't be at operating at the top level all the time. Right. Yep. So oh, but you're you should always be moving forward and right switching off and making sure each pot is being watered, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think there's a difference between, and this is one thing that I realized, there's a difference between contentment and complacency. And I definitely become very complacent where like, I was like, no, again, like, no, you should stay. You're fine. You're fine. Like you're quit being such a brat, you know, I would tell myself. And then I was like, eh, I am not evolving at all as a woman, you know? So what was the breaking point for you? What was that point where you're like, got to go? So I think um, for me, the, it was actually an external thing that was required from another woman um, because it hadn't been good in a long time. Yeah. And I knew that, but 
I wasn't ready to accept it, say it out loud, um, say it in meaning to myself even, much less other people. But other people were seeing it. And one afternoon I was closing up the bookshop and a friend came in and she said, can I talk to you for a minute? And this happened all the time in a small bookshop, right? It's sort of like church for for book people, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, confessions and um and these, you know, really intense chats and it's just a place, you know, it was a small shop and people would come and talk all the time. And so I was like, okay, I have to get get home to get dinner on the table, but I'll give her a minute. She needs something, right? What I didn't understand is she was coming to talk to me. Mm. And she had seen something earlier in the week that just stuck with her Mm. and between my husband and myself at the time. Mm. And she came and she just said, you know, you can leave, right? And at first I didn't really know what she meant. And then, then I understood. Mm. And, And I didn't actually know that. Mm. And that's interesting. Yeah. Why, why, why did you not know that? I think at that point I had bought in, you know, to, um, the idea of, um, not just the sort of political institution of marriage, right. That's Mm -hmm. separate. I do agree that that is a strong, um, Mm -hmm. and, (laughs) uh, terrifying force in our culture. Uh, (laughs) however, it was more personal, right. Leaving I, w- I had equated that with failing, mm-hmm. right? The fear of breaking up a family, mm-hmm. uh, of destroying something that was intact. Uh, and and once she sort of opened that door and I could kind of peek through and see what mm-hmm. might be on the other side, right? It was too scary even to look for a, a very long period. Once I looked and I realized, actually, it's definitely different and there are some scary things, but wow, there's a lot of beauty and freedom and possibility over there. I know what it's like on this side. I know what it's like if I stay in this room, Mm. I might not know, but looking through that door suddenly was so, it was the first time I'd felt hope in a Mm. long time. And I'd really missed that. Um, And so it was, it was that sort of just playing with, feeling right uh the 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 manifestation of what it would feel like mm-hmm. to be on the other side is then what made it possible for me to it took a long time right orchestrating financially job wise everything that was the moment where i thought okay this i think this is the direction i want to move in yeah isn't it interesting that we almost forget as we get older to dream and to, and to have desires it's almost like, okay, you're not allowed to do that anymore. Sorry. Like your, your dreaming days are over. You're not allowed to leap into more exciting things in life. Like why? Like, like, and I don't know, like I, I do, like, I can totally relate to everything you were saying. And I can remember thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm going to upset the apple cart here. Like I'm going to be the big bad apple. Yeah. <laughs> Power apple of the whole mix and, and have to make the announcement to everyone. And then there's always the why. Mm-hmm. And, and the one thing I learned, I was like, why does it matter? And, and to not have to feel, I think as women especially, we like to explain everything because mm-hmm. we're trying to seek the approval of people that are listening. Like, oh, hopefully my, my parents are going to be upset. Let me explain it in the way that's going to be good for them. And, then, and of course, it's not like you're just going to go, hi, you know, I'm leaving or getting a divorce. Of course, you'll say a little something, but not to the point where like, not everyone's going to agree. Right. Probably most people won't. Mm-hmm. But as long as you agree, it's what you need to do. And to trust that, yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And right. it's so worth going through the darkness to get there. Shit. It is. And it reminds me when I was working on this book before it came out and people I would say, you know, it's about my divorce and people would say, oh my goodness, your, your children are going to read that. What, what are, and as if I hadn't thought about that, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, think, <laughs> like, I think that's the same thing. It's trusting women, right? Yeah. If you're saying, 
that you're leaving, there's a reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? You've done the math. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Like I've kind of calculated this quite a few times in my head, you know? And you know what? I This was so interesting. Um, I was, this was back in San Diego. I was doing a Heal Your Life workshop or whatever, Louise Hay. And this lady, isn't that amazing though? Like sometimes just one, again, like one little moment of someone saying something to you is like, that was like, that. there you go. That was, it was almost like you, we need these permission slips or like, yes, oh, you could do it. Right. But, um, she had said we were like broken out into teams or whatever. We were doing some type of little exercise and, and she goes, the hardest thing I've ever had to do was leave a good man. Mm. And this was ripe of, this was when I was going back and forth in my head. Should I, should I stay or should I go now? No. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I was like, damn, she like, yes, that's exactly what it is. Because my ex, great man, great father, but uh, it's just, Wendy had to go. I, it was just not for me. It was good at the time, 20 years prior, but no, it. I had to, I had to move on in so many different ways. Right. But yeah, you have to come. And I think too, like you, you may not have to be completely at peace with yourself, right. Before you leave, it doesn't have to feel a thousand percent, but you'll get there. Like sometimes like that healing, the healing takes place before you leave, during the leave, after the leave, much la- after the leave. Right. How how different, how have you changed since you've left, since your since your divorce? How different of a woman are you now? I mean, I think a lot of this book is actually about returning. Mm. Mm. Having lost my way and returning back to something. Uh I think I think the probably the most fundamental change was believing, I mean, to my core that I didn't like being a mother. I was not good at being a mother. Um, I had a really rough first few years. Um, Mm -hmm. I loved my kids, but I thought I was not good in that space. Mm -hmm. Uh, It took leaving and becoming a solo parent Mm -hmm. to really fall in love with the possibility of being a mom and, yeah. and on my terms, right? Yeah. Uh, and now it's the greatest joy of my life. Now that's not going to be the same story for everybody, but for right. me, it was being able to. I I was um, attributing a lot of insecurity, unhappiness to that motherhood aspect mm-hmm. of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once everything else shifted, and that creativity part, the strength, the independence returned, and I could funnel that into the motherhood job. Mm. All of a sudden it felt, it was, it was reflexive. I was gaining strength and uh, the love beam that would just come from the kids, right? I could accept it suddenly in a way that I couldn't before. And that I think was probably trusting myself just the most fundamental in the most fundamental way was the biggest change. And that I think, even though this is a divorce story, um, really it's, it's a love story about falling in love with myself and my, and who I was at that point in my life. Yeah. I always say that, you know, I got a, a divorce to marry myself. (laughs) Being married to myself. It's great. But you know, I mean, I had been with someone since I was 15 years old. I was always in a freaking relationship. And I mean, one of the reasons I didn't want to divorce this last time is because I had been divorced before. So I literally was like, I can't do it again. That's just like horrible. Like I can't get a, get a second divorce. And then I even thought, who's going to want me? How would I be in a nut? You know, it's like all the bullshit lies you start to tell yourself. And then like, oh, I'll, I'll never date. No one will want me because I've been divorced twice. And then I thought about it. And I was like, I was, I was watching, 
whatever, some movie or something. Maybe it was like Elizabeth Taylor. And I thought, she's she been married six times. <laughs> They've been married twice. Am I that bad? You know, like if she could do it, well, she's got more. She had more, has had whatever, more money than I do. But maybe <laughs> that's the reason. But, but I mean, it's, it's crazy the lies that we will tell ourselves to prevent us from moving forward and moving on and evolving and growing. And I mean, what, what is uh, Marianne Williams, Williamson, her quote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. And I'll admit, I was scared of my light. By me staying in my marriage and staying small and staying in that little bitty potted plant, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to stay here because this is safer. Because then if I really go out there into the light, shit, I got to basically do what I'm doing now, <laughs> you know, and that can be scary. It but is scary. What, what were some of your greatest fears in leaving? I think immediately, um, the fears of being able to provide for my kids, um, you know, being able, a lot of it, I think you're right. The questions that mm. women ask mm -hmm. are so different than the questions that men ask. Oh, yeah, I know. And, um, what will it mean? Uh -huh. What will people think of me, right? For, for a long period, I didn't tell anybody. Mm. Uh, I went through two different jobs and where I didn't tell anyone what my actual situation was uh because I didn't want them to now I'm a, I'm a professor I was on the tenure track I didn't want them to think I was a bad bet yeah. I didn't want them to think I was messy oh she's in the middle of a divorce that's messy she's not <laughs> even announcing yourself as a mother is yeah. messy right? mm -hmm. if you're not going to be focused on your work that's what they right. believe yeah um, anyone who's mom knows that if you, if you need somebody to get a job done, find a single parent and you will, they will get it. <laughs> exactly. I know we can tackle it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the beautiful thing. You talked about permission slips before. I mean, yeah. that's what your whole show is. That's what your upcoming book is, right? Yep. We need to continually give each other those permission slips, mm -hmm. not just to say, um, you can do this next thing, but also you can just be right yeah you can inhabit your truth and share that and that's mm -hmm. enough and yeah. I think that's the you know um the idea that for me what was powerful was being able to write this down mm -hmm. live with it think about it revise it you know have the angry draft have the have the pity draft have like all of the different drafts and then come back to it we were talking before about neutrality right yeah. come back to it from a powerful place be able to write into it without condemnation without revenge without mm -hmm. you know i am the center of this this is about me figuring stuff out and then i get to put this on the shelf yeah right and yeah. i get to I get to write my story I and it felt the most powerful. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the book is, yes, it's your past and it's also your present and also your future because within that book, and I know you know this, but you have so much wisdom that you gained from all that, yeah. from the experiences. I mean, I do like, it sounds crazy. Like I've, I think I posted a reel about this like a while back about loving divorce and debt and death and all of the shit that we get hit with in life. Like if you learn to love it, if you learn to embrace it, it will give you so many gifts mm -hmm. that you just, it's crazy how, how you will evolve as a person if you can just learn to go, okay. Here it is in front of me. Let me deal with it. And then I'm going to move on. Yeah. Yeah. And not to, I mean, I, not that I don't do this. I work, work on this every day <laughs> to not come from a place of fear. Yes. Uh, once you've gone through difficult things like that, you realize, okay, maybe yeah. that's not the worst thing, but I've been through something like this, mm -hmm. survived. 
Uh, and then when you have these two small people attached to you, <laughs> you know, suddenly you become a lot stronger and you are willing to go to battle in ways that, you know, for me, that I wasn't willing to do just for myself. But now with these two small people watching me, I suddenly had an audience that I was teaching, whether I meant to or not, yes. but understanding that every day when I didn't stand up for myself, mm -hmm. when I didn't follow my joy or my passion um, or my happiness when I didn't choose me, mm -hmm. I was teaching them. Yes. Stay small too. Yep. I totally agree. And I, I think about, uh, there was a stat that I saw the other day is I think, I think over the age of 40, that 60% of marriages are ending in divorce. Now that that's actually like an official number, but how many, what, how many more are staying because they're you know, because of finances or the children, right? But going back to what you were saying though, I've always said that when you stay in an unhappy marriage because of the children, you're showing, you were teaching your children to stay in unhappy relationships. And you're showing them, no, you are a woman that just stays even if you're not happy with something. Mm -hmm. But if you get out of the relationship and you move on, you can show your children, this is what you do. This is how you handle it, right? Like, this is how you can conquer your life. This is how you can reinvent yourself. I mean, that is the most valuable lesson that you can teach your children to, to take charge of your life. As you know, midlife is a bustling time. We manage households, nurture relationships, advance careers, and raise children. These responsibilities, while fulfilling, can sometimes drain your energy and diminish your personal strengths. To help you reawaken those dormant powers and embrace the superhero that you truly are, I created the Superhero Quiz at MySuperheroQuiz.com. This fast, free, and fun quiz will help you discover which superhero mirrors your strengths and personality. Plus, you'll receive a detailed guide tailored to your superhero profile, helping you to harness your strengths and soar to new heights. Just head over to MySuperheroQuiz.com and embrace the superhero within you. Yeah, and that goes for, you know, whether you have regardless of the gender of your kids, right? Because right. we are, for those of us who have little boys, right? They are yeah. also learning how to grow up and be men and in relationships and things like, I mean, that's, that's a huge, um, I don't want to say weight on my shoulder because that feels negative, but what a gift that I get to participate yeah. in growing them, right? Growing that next, that next. Yeah, time. I know. And to do that with joy and right. And the attachment that, um, the healthy attachment that you hope is what you can hand off. Um, mm -hmm. I think that one of the biggest lessons when my co-editor Margot Kahn and I were putting together the wanting book, right? We had an idea of, of some of the women that we wanted to write for us. And we sent out a few emails and so many women wrote back and said, you know, yes, I would love to write about wanting desire. This sounds amazing. I'll get right back to you. And then they sat with it and thought about it and realized, I don't even know what I want. Ah, uh, yeah. We lose connection to mm -hmm. that really important fundamental question so that we're just existing in the air. We're not going in a direction. And I also, I think there was one really important moment um, where I was uh, in pretty new in motherhood and I was staying overnight to teach a class at Columbia and I was staying in a friend's apartment um, by myself. And it was the first time I'd been alone in a really long time. Yeah. I had to feed myself, right? Mm -hmm. And I just remember walking around the grocery store. I, I didn't even know what I was hungry for. Yeah. And so on like a non-metaphorical way, like <laughs> that kind of hunger, that kind of base hunger, what do I want to eat right now? Uh, that question I wasn't able to answer, much less, what am I hungry for? Right? Yeah. Move towards what's driving me. Um, and I think 
the other interesting lesson in that book, a lot of the women wrote first drafts and they wrote about um, not really what they wanted, but why they couldn't get what they wanted. Mm. And we, this book, we really, really wanted to focus on the want, right? Yes. The physical desire, like that juicy want painful wanting stage of what it feels like, whether it's another person, whether it's food, whatever it is um, to experience, because that leaving, right. That needs to be preceded by wanting something different and want in our culture, especially for women is a dirty word. And so we're trained to everything's fine. We're fine. We don't need anything. Right. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm good. What, but what is that? What does everybody else need? Yes. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't want anything. I'm good. Totally. And yeah. that will get you a tiny yeah. plant. Right. <laughs> just, yeah, exactly. Get stuck. Tiny uh, plant. Yeah. And that there's, you lose your life force and it's really hard to get back. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people lose it. Um, you know, just whether it's the turnstile of daily life, uh, or something traumatic happening, but you know, we lose it and it's, if we don't foster that it's gone, only you can bring it. Sometimes too, we don't, this just popped my mind that maybe we don't even give ourselves the chance to want or to desire something. Cause that means if you want something, you got to make a freaking move and go after it. And you might not get it. Exactly. So we're worried about the heartbreak or not being able to do it right, not being good enough. So therefore we stay in that tiny little potted plant, right? So we almost don't even give ourselves permission to dream or to want, because what's the point? Like, I'm not going to do it anyways. I can't get that. I've got all these restrictions and limiting beliefs and doubts and it made me think of um, Brene Brown. She it was on. I don't know if it's still on there, but it was the call to courage that she did on Netflix, and she was. It's really really good. And she was talking about if you think about it, anytime you've done something courageous in your life, you've had to get vulnerable. Yep, you've had to. Like you have to get vulnerable with yourself, even the people around you. You have to be transparent. You'd be like here we go, you know, and then you leap, but you have like, I've always said too, like, you can't, like, I can't give you a jar of courage. No, but I can't give anyone a jar of courage. You fill up your own jar of courage by actually taking courageous steps. And the more that you do it, the better you get at it. The more you're like, shit, yeah, I can do that. Like, you know, I mean, that's why I think like sometimes not that I'm, you know, encouraging people to get divorced or anything, but, but when you go through it, when you're on the other side of it, you can look back and go, that's right. I did that. <laughs> like in that one movie, I can't remember coach, coach Carter. He's like, that's right. I tied that. But anyways, but you can be like pat on the freaking back. I got through it. You know what I mean? Like. Not that you're like trying to like, you know, oh, four stars on that or something like that, but, or, you know, a plus on that divorce, but, (laughs) you know, like, but Hey, it's something you went through that could, could, you could allow it to totally tear you down, break you down, rip your life apart, or you make the choice to like, I'm going to come out better on the other side of this. It's a choice. Yeah. And it can also, it can also be an and, right? You can get torn yes. down and you can still stand and, up, yeah, right? Yeah. That's, that feels so realistic. And yes, desire is so vulnerable. Yeah. It, it's so vulnerable to say, I want something, right? To, yeah. to move forward towards something and then to say it out loud. I know. Uh, because then, right, the possibility of failure becomes public too. And, and that, um, it's scary. So scary. My stomach hurts right now. Think I'm having <laughs> like, empathy pains for everyone listening right now. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah. But so do it anyway. Yeah. And I remember a very dear friend of mine was going through a separation and divorce for the past few years. And and like we would 
work together, walk together, work together. And uh, she knew, and I could see that she knew, Mm -hmm. but she couldn't do it yet. And she kept hoping that she wouldn't have to, right? Yeah. I agree. I am not pro-divorce. I but if you need one, get one, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, watching her, I remember we talked about this metaphor that seemed that really stuck with me. Just the idea that from, from my view where I could see mm-hmm. her, right? She felt like she was drowning and that she yeah. had nothing left, right? I knew from the outside, I knew that she was actually drowning in like the shallow end of a pool (laughs) and that if she just stood up, she would be out of the water. Yeah. But sometimes it's so hard to stand up. Yeah. And, and you don't know that you can do it until you do it. And then you're like, Oh, I'm out. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or like, um, what's the same leap and the net will appear. Right. And I've thought, I've always thought about that quote, leap in the net will appear. I'm like, well, what's the net? And you were the net. And it's mm-hmm. having that, it's having that faith in yourself that you will catch yourself like, and you will become so much stronger after you do that. Um, I just, as you were talking, I, I was thinking about the title of your book and it's perfect. Cause, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before leaving season. It's a season. It's just a freaking season, <laughs> right? Like, like summer passes, winter passes, right? I mean, it's a season. You get through it. Yeah, right. Like everything else. And both, I mean, there's the the sort of leaving, right? Mm. So much in divorce seems like there's a before and after. Mm-hmm. And yes, of course, yeah, there yeah. is actually. Um, however, I know for me, I felt, and I really was, stuck in that middle leaving for so long, yeah. uh, whether it's legally, emotionally, right, all all the ways. Um, and and it, I mean, you 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 shared your life with this person, yeah, right. In my case, they are the father of my children, right. So mm-hmm. it will it will never be over right i will always be in a state of leaving but it is right the season comes and goes it's cyclical um and and it shifts it will it won't always hurt as much as right right and Mm -hmm. and other things will hurt more right (laughs) things will will add and, and pile in and fill that pain space um but but that too will will keep you if you keep going, you just have to keep going. And, yeah, and, and, you know, I was just thinking too, the same, I think I might've said this in the introduction, um, but divorce, what, or, you know, a marriage, a job, a town, there's tons of things that we leave throughout our lifetime. And it's okay. If with that, if you have to leave, like I, when I look back, what I've been writing about in the book, it's crazy. But I think like six years ago, I left all of it. I left the marriage, a business, my career. I left a um, house. I left a town. I went from Williamsburg, Virginia to Chicago, Illinois. Like left friends, family, like talk about throwing myself into one <laughs> gigantic pot <laughs> to be <laughs> to be replanted in and i just had to gradually like fill the dirt in and start watering myself until i grew into the woman that i am now i mean not to, i'm not recommending everybody do that but point is is that there are several things in life that you leave that you just have to create that courage within yourself and go for it. Right. And I think nature, I mean, a lot of what I write about is nature-based. And Mm -hmm. if we look at sort of, you know, not to get hokey, but mother nature. um, I love hokey. Right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Hokey is my thing. (laughs) Okay. Good. Then then you won't mind. Um, Right. Looking at, at the natural cycles around us 
right? Mm -hmm. That we are just part of. Um, when my, uh, both of my parents were divorced before they got married mm -hmm. and, um, and when I was thinking about this, my dad, uh, you know, for a period, he, he loves gardening and things like that. He's a total garden nerd. And when I said, you know, I'm thinking about leaving, uh, he would come over and he would show me, you know, how to, um, split, you know, hostas, how to split mm -hmm. rhubarb, right. Um, all of these particular types of plants. And he was showing me, right. Sometimes when you split, you get so much growth afterwards from, mm -hmm. And not just one, right? Oh, I love that analogy. It's, it was so helpful. And, oh. and he really showed me and reminded me to look around. And and it was also good, even though um, I, I'm not sure that my ex would, would say this, but <laughs> it was good for him too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, if we're, there are two people here. Um, and one doesn't want to be there. It's not right. good. For, it's oh, not. no, exactly. That's kind of how I felt, too. I was like, well, that's not fair, right? Uh, speaking of nature, we'll we'll throw out another nature metaphor here. Okay, great. One of my favorites um, is the butterfly. And when the butterfly is busting out of the cocoon, like if you actually cut the top of a cocoon off and took the balloon, balloon, shit, took the butterfly out, the butterfly would be deformed and it would die. So when you're in a leaving season, no matter what you're leaving, think of yourself as that butterfly trying to bust out of the cocoon to fly, to set yourself free. You will struggle. Like it's a guarantee, but the struggle is good. The yes. struggle is there to teach you something. And I think, I don't know, like for me, when I was going through all of that in my life, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do my best to be super mindful as I go through all this shit. And I like, I was trying to just pay attention to what was going on outside of me, within me. How, like, how can I learn from this? How can, how can I grow from this? Like all of that, like you, and even the really, really rough parts. I was like, I'm going to pay attention to this. I'm going to, I'm not going to just cry. I'm like, cry like a freaking baby. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really going balls out with the grief, you know? But it's, it taught me so much. Yeah. And I, and I don't think, yeah, I, I think if I'd taken a different route with that, I, I would not be where I'm at. I, I probably, I don't even know if I'd be here, honestly. Like, so it's, it's, it's choice though. And you have to choose, choose to, to fly, to be free, to set yourself free. And you're right. You have to, that butterfly has to go through that like weird, soupy, messy period yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, list, right? in order to transform. Otherwise he's just going to be a worm his whole life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just eating everything, yeah, eating your dad, eating your yeah. dad's garden. Like, <laughs> you're like, nom, nom, nom. Yeah. And right. That's safe. That that's a perfectly fine life. Yeah, exactly. They don't know they could be a butterfly. Exactly. That's yeah. And everyone out there can be a butterfly. <laughs> you just have to get, but we're giving you a permission slip today. Yeah. Yes. You can fly. So um, if you don't mind sharing, what are your, what's your biggest desire right now? What are you wanting right now in your life? Okay. I, um, just had this incredible experience, um, where I was able to go to a writing residency and, and basically for almost for two weeks, it was just me. Somebody fed me. They gave me a room that they changed the linens, right? Uh, somebody, uh, took care like I had a studio that I could that I just had a giant cork board and I could put all of my projects up and nobody told me I had to be anywhere the only thing I had to do the only responsibility was show up and be fed N nice I like I, it I mean yeah. it's the first few days were so painful because <sighs> I didn't have children or a partner or a job like I I just it was just me and it hasn't been like that for quite a while, even though I wrote this whole book and, you know, worked on that. It's so 
unusual to really have that space of just being alone with yourself yeah. and figuring out, okay, what do I want? Mm. Um, and I did, you know, once I sort of relaxed into it um, and got started getting into that workspace of the flow, it's such hard work, but it feeds me so much. And, yeah. and I think for me, it's that reminder that, and then once I came home, I'll, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, my son's birthday and the job, <laughs> you know, all this stuff, uh, which I love all of that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really hard though, being uh, compartmentalized and dividing. So I think, you know, it was just a really good reminder to every morning, um, instead of looking at my phone, right, start the day intentionally. Uh, start at reading, start at stretching, get in tune with your body, that kind of thing. Just mm-hmm. so you can answer that question. It's going to change every day what I want. Yes. Um, and, you know, some days I want to sleep in, <laughs> not do anything, but, uh, and not that I really have that option, but, um, but I think, I think just asking, just being reminded to ask that question every day, what do I want? Yeah. Is, um, and and being able to announce that I want, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's okay. I do. Mm-hmm. I want things. I want things I don't have. Yeah. I want to get. And and to be open in the world. Um because it is vulnerable. You once people know what you want, that can be a power thing, right? But to to just be a, per, a woman in the world who wants, I think yes. is really yeah. fundamental. I want change. I want beauty. I want um, work. I want mm-hmm. sex. I want love. Yeah. I want all of the things. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's almost the most revolutionary <laughs> part that you can play. Yeah. And I was just thinking too, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but wanting is also, that's part of self-care. That's part of saying, I care that much about myself that I can state what I want and what I need in life. Right. And, and women, it's... like, we're awful at <laughs> taking care of ourselves, right? We're always taking care of everybody else. Right. And and with that goes what you don't want. Yes. Oh, Yeah. I'm glad you said that because I think for me, that was, I had to figure out what I did not want in my life first. And I had to kind of declutter (laughs) all of that stuff before I could really make room for the stuff I wanted. Yeah. I mean, you made, (laughs) you, you made amazing room. (laughs) I I had a bulldozer. I was like, raw. (laughs) out of my way. And sometimes I feel like sometimes you have, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to deconstruct your old life in order to construct a new life. Yeah, And that's I mean, okay. And it takes time, but the reward is so worth it. No, it, it absolutely is. And yeah, it's, um, it's terrifying <laughs> to say I want, uh, but but otherwise, you're just going to be that little worm hanging out. Yeah, I know. Eating leaves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, and I'm going to state my want because yeah. I feel like it's more powerful. If you put it out there in the universe, right? Help it to grow. But I, this is my first book coming out. And I'm so freaking nervous and I'm excited. But I would just love for this book to be a huge hit. Not for me. I know this sounds corny and I'm, t- I'm this is not bullshit. I do want this for everyone. Cause like everything that I've talked about and the things that I did, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I can do it, you can do it. And I want, I hear it all the time from women that are just like, I'll stay here. I'm just, I don't, I'm like, no, 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 no. You can do so many amazing things with, with, with your life. Like it's just, and so I, I don't know, I, I want this book to be a huge success because I, I know it can change so many lives. That's the, that's um, my want. I, that's honestly been also the, the definition of success, right? Like the, 
when I get a letter from mm-hmm. somebody who read the book and it, yeah. that's the best thing I can hope yeah. for. I have this the Leaving Season postcard project that I do through my Substack where people send me postcards. Oh, and yes, I saw that. That's so cool. It's and for as many years as I've worked on this project, and I think I know so much about leaving, right? Um, just reading other women's, other people's experiences mm-hmm. about leaving. I have so much to learn. And yeah. that community aspect, what you're talking about, mm-hmm. right? Your what will make your book a success is if other people connect to it. Yes. And it's it's a circle, right? Yep. So that I think um makes everyone more powerful. Mm-hmm. And that's I think ultimately what I want to. Yeah. And I think that's what's nice with books and sharing stories on podcasts is that you feel like you're not alone. Like, oh shit, I feel that way too. Or, you know, like, and again, like back to the permission slips, it's like, okay, great. She said, I can do it. Of course you can do it. Yeah. That's true. We just need that reminder. Yeah. This has been great. I love stuff like this. (laughs) Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. So much better than talking about menopause, you know? I mean, the (laughs) menopause if we could just have a leaving season with menopause, oh, like, we just, maybe we menopause just, but. and maybe just rename it. So men is not the, I know, in- right. It, yes. Even yeah, have you noticed all of it, all of it starts with men, menstrual cycle, menstrual cramps, menopause. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. I know. What the heck? <laughs> Let's take it back. Yeah. You know, right. Um, so where can we find you? How do we buy your books? Sure. Um, the both books, Wanting and the Leaving Season, are everywhere online. So bookshop.org, you know, the scary monoliths, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, all of that, as well as your local independent bookshop. As a former independent bookshop owner, I if you have one near you, go there yeah. and at, and you can order anything you need there too. The library. I also love my library. You can always get books there. Um, and then, yeah, hit, find me on Substack. Um, I have a fairly new newsletter there. It's called The Magpie because um, I love collecting things. And so that is where you can find the postcard project. And you can just find all of this information and more at my website, which is simply my name, kellymcmasters.com. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Your website's great. And I, like I told you earlier, your, your book covers are amazing. It's like works of art. Love it. Thank I you so much. Thank you. And, and good luck. I can't wait to pre-order your book in February. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change or spit out your coffee laughing? Good. Then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, You can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you.